Hello and welcome to today's lesson. <clears throat> We're going to be looking at topics under the Study Island lesson, Exponential and Logarithmic Equations in Algebra 2, and also looking at questions from that standard 2.5b in Algebra 2. So what I've done is I've gone through and pulled out the types of questions that you can do sh straight with little or no work on the TI-84 Plus calculator, and I'm going to be showing you how to do those. So as I'm going through these, please be taking notes, um, writing down the steps and the buttons that I push so that you have those to refer back to when you are trying these problems on your own. To do these first sets of equations, there's a little bit of background information that you need to know, and that's how to solve an equation graphically. So to solve any equation, not just necessarily these exponential and logarithmic ones that we're looking at, you need to set that equation equal to zero, and then graph it, and we're going to do that step using the graphing calculator, and then find the x-intercept, which we can also do finding the graphing using the graphing calculator. Remember, the x-intercept is in the form of a coordinate where the y-coordinate is 0, and then that x-intercept is that number in the, that is your x-coordinate. And then it can also be called a 0, so it's x-intercept and 0 are two vocabulary words with the same definition. So this question here, I'm going to be solving for x, and I'm going to use it graphic, do it graphically using the graphing calculator. Um, so the only thing I have to do on paper and pencil is to solve it for, solve this equation for 0. So that all that means is I have a positive 18 on this side, so I just need to subtract 18 from both sides. And so I'm going to subtract 18 from this side and from this side, and that cancels out on the right side and makes that 0. And I'm just going to add a minus 18 to the end of what's on the left side. And that's my equation solved for 0. And so that, my next step is to graph. And so that's what I'm going to put into y1 is this new equation that I have solved for 0. So I'm going to have 6 log and because I have an invisible base 10, I can use the log button this time. And then in parentheses, I'm going to put x, and I use this button beside alpha to do x, plus 989, in parentheses, minus 18. So then you can double check that what you have written down is what's up here. And then you can go ahead and graph. But instead of just pressing the graph button, I like to do the zoom and then standard so that I get a standard window of negative 10 to positive 10 and on both the x and y axis. And so evidently that window is too small because I don't see anything there. And so if I look at my answer choices here, I see that it could be up towards 2,000 that I need to see. So I'm going to go back into window and I'm going to go at at least 100 both ways. So I'm going to tell the x-axis to start at a negative 100 and end at positive 100. And I'm going to change the scale to positive 10. And that's just saying that there'll be a tick mark every 10. So at 10, 20, 30, etc. and negative 10, negative 20, negative 30 on down. And so then I'm going to do the same for the y-axis. And then I'm going to press graph. And this time, it's going to give me a little bit bigger of a screen. And so I still don't see the graph. So sometimes you can play around the window continuing to look for the graph, but that can be kind of time consuming. And so a second way that we have to look for the x-intercept is to look at the table. So I'm going to press second table. And I can see here I have a list of x numbers and the y coordinates that go with those x-coordinates, and so these are ordered pairs. And so remember, an x-intercept is an ordered pair where the y-coordinate is zero. And so since it's multiple choice, I have these places, these four places to look on the table that tell me which one's going to be the x-intercept. So if I look at 983 in the x column and there's a 0 beside it, that's going to be my answer, and so on. So what you can do, so you don't have to scroll so far, is you can go to second table set right here and say, where's the table going to start? Have it, then tell it to start at 983, and then do second table. And you can say, okay, that's not a 0. 
So then I'm going to have to do that again. So second table start, tell it this time to start at 3. And then second table, okay, that's not a 0. 11, that's close enough that I can scroll to. And there's the 0. So that means 11 is going to be the answer, which is C. So here, this is going to be the same steps as before. My first step is going to be to solve this equation for 0. So I'm going to go ahead and write down this equation. And it looks kind of complicated and like it's going to be hard to solve. But really, you're just subtracting the 1 from both sides. And so when I subtract 1 from both sides, these ones cancel and I'm left with 0. And then all the rest, I don't have to do any simplifying because I can just type this straight into the graphing calculator, so I don't have to worry about simplifying, is going to be what's equal to 0. And so now, that's I'm going to go into my y equals and clear out what was there from before. And I'm going to type in log 4. So because it isn't an invisible 10, I'm going to have to go into math and scroll down to the bottom and use that log base option, which is option A. So I'm going to highlight the A and press enter. And I'm going to fill in the 4. And then I have another log 4, so I'm going to have to repeat that again. Go into, put the arrow, the cursor into the parentheses first, and then go into math. And then select a log base and enter. And fill in a 4 and fill in an X in the parentheses using my right arrows to navigate where I need to. And then put a minus 1 at the end. And now what I had on paper is what's in the computer. And so this, I'm going to go ahead and go back and graph this and do zoom standard, which is choice 6. So then I know the screen, the axis is both start at negative 10 and go to positive 10. And so there I can see my graph, but it's not yet crossing the x-axis yet. It's just below it. It's getting really close, but it's kind of taken a while. So I can go ahead and make my screen bigger. And I see that it might have to go all the way up to like 260 in order to see the x-axis. And so I'm going to go into Window. And I only really need to mess with the x-axis because I can already see the graph um, with the y where it's at. It's just I don't see where it's crossing the x-axis yet. So I'm going to leave it starting at negative 10. And I'm going to go ahead and take it up to 300. And then just so that there's not little tick marks all the way across, I'm going to change this to 10. And I'm going to press Graph. And it's still graphing because it's moving over here on the side. And here, it's really hard to see because I think it gets really, really close to the x-axis. And so you could use the calc button to find the zero, but I'm just going to go ahead and go to table because it's going to be more clear. So I'm going to go second table. And my first choice is a fraction. And so that one isn't going to be on the table the way it is, but I can see that at 1, there's an error, and at 0, there's an error. And everything after that is also an error. So that means 1 fourth is also going to be an error since it's between 0 and 1. And so then I can look for 16. And then, well, choice 4, choice C here is on the way. And I can see there's not a 0 across from that. So then I'll scroll down to 16. And 16, there's not a 0 across from that. Now it would take me a long time to scroll to 256. So I'm going to go to second table set and type in 256 on where to start the table and then go back to second table and it automatically takes me to 256 where the zero is across from it so that means D is going to be my final answer. So this problem here is going to be very similar to the last two. It's going to follow the same steps. We're just going to have a little bit different buttons to press since it's an LN instead of a log. It's a natural log instead of the logarithm. And so I'm going to go ahead and solve this for 0 just by subtracting this whole term here from both sides. And because what's in parentheses isn't the same, 
I can't combine any of these terms on the left side, so it's just going to stay the same. So I'm just going to copy down the first part with the original right side subtracted from it. But on the right side here, they do cancel, and I'm left with zero. And so this here is what I'm going to be typing into the graphing calculator. So I'm going to go into y equals and clear out what's there. And I'm going to start with this ln. And to get to the ln, I just use this ln button right here. And then in the parentheses, I'm going to do 4x minus 3 in parentheses. And then plus ln x plus 2 in parentheses minus ln 4x squared. And here I, type, I got messed up in my typing, so I'm just going to go back and delete it. So 4x squared plus 5 in parentheses. And so now I can go ahead and graph it, and I'm going to go zoom standard so that I can get back to that standard window where the axis is both start at negative 10 and go up to 10. And I can see that my graph is here, but it must be floating really close to the x-axis, so it's hard to find the zero using the calc function. So I'm just going to jump to that table again. <clears throat> And so, once again, I see that the table starts at 256. So instead of scrolling, scrolling down to these small numbers, I'm going to go ahead and go to second table set and tell it to start at zero. And so before, it was going in increments of one. But I look, and I have a lot of fractions here. And two of them have a five on the bottom. So I'm going to tell it to go in increments of one-fifth. And if I don't find the answer, then I'm going to go back and tell it to go in increments of 1 11th to see if D is the answer. And so then I'm going to go to second table, and it does it by decimals. So that's not a big deal. Um, the first one I want to check out, though, is negative 5, but I can see that as I'm going negative, I'm getting an error. So that's probably not going to be the answer. So then let's try out negative 1 fifth. So once again, it's negative and negative one-fifth is equivalent to this negative point two, and I'm getting an error there also. And so then I want to look at eleven-fifths. So when I think about it, five goes into eleven twice, the remainder of one. So it's really two and one-fifth. And if I scroll, there at two point two is zero. So I know that two point two is going to be my answer. And if you want to know for sure that 11 fifths is going to be the answer, you can go into the home screen, so second quit, and do 11 divided by 5, enter, which is 2.2. So that just confirms that C is going to be your final answer. The last question we're going to look at is how to do an inverse. And this is going to be the same steps as the function inverse lesson that I did before this on the playlist. Um, but just remember that when you have an inverse, the reflection of the in, the inverse is going to be a reflection over the y equals x line. So here, this is the original function, and it's the f inverse has been this is this red dotted graph reflected over the y equals x line. So to find the inverse, you would need to type the other question that you're given into the problem. And then you would type each answer into Y2 separately. So I went ahead and did choice A here. And then you would go into second, draw, and choose the eighth choice, which is draw inverse. And then you would go into VARS and choose Y1. And then you would click enter. And you would watch the graph to see if the, you would watch the first graph be drawn, which would be the 1 fourth of the X power. And then you would watch the second one be drawn, which is choice A, and then you would look to see if the inverse is drawn directly on top of choice A. And if it is, then that's your answer. If not, then you have to put B into Y2 and repeat. And if you want to see some of those actually worked out, you can go into the functional inverses lesson that I did before this. 
So I'm so glad that you joined us today and I hope you learned something new.